Hello, my name is Dante Renee, and welcome to the 10 Room Bizarro YouTube page where I talk about films that I believe need to be talked about more. Like tonight's film. This is 1984's, I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, Baja Blanca. Okay, I believe it's an actual location. Okay, I didn't do much research on this. By Jess Franco. Okay, now this, is, this particular release was released by Severn in a very limited release, and it's supposedly like almost like one of the rarest Jess Franco films, and one of the most limited releases in the modern era of Jess Franco that I've seen, at least. This is a film that I never heard much about. It's a movie that... It, it didn't really cross my 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 frame of reference other than Stephen Thrower's books. Um, this occupies a really interesting world. It's a world that is simultaneously mysterious yet it's also very, very beautiful and quiet in a relaxing sort of way. Now, how do you do this, right? How do you make something simultaneously mysterious with the sound of an acoustic guitar and Spanish music and kind of this lullaby Spanish melody to acoustic guitar? It's like flamenco guitar, okay? Almost like that. Something you would hear on the beach. Something you would hear in a Jess Franco film. And how do you make that mysterious? As the movie goes on, that melody, that song, which is mimed in by one of the characters, that song becomes darker to me as the movie goes on. Some people have told me that this is a Jess Franco film that is quite unique in his canon. And I can completely see why. Because this is one that, from the get-go, within 15 minutes, this thing is very complex. It's, it's, it, the, the dialogue is very complex. The storyline is very complex. You don't want to bat an eye because the, the characters are very complex. There's something going on here. And there's a lot being said from the get-go. There's, there's a lot unraveling. There's a lot happening. And you're learning more and more and more. So, you know, right at the beginning when you think that you already have it figured out, it's, it's far from being figured out. It's crazy how how dense the world of Baha Blanca is. Um, in terms of the storyline, I almost compare it to something dramatically in kind of like a Spanish soap opera. It, it, you know, you're kind of getting thrown into this, into this world of, um, you know, you have... some really bad relationships or, or some history of bad relationships. You have romance. You got romance gone bad. You got a lot of hurt and pain. Um, you have elements of power and jealousy um, and just kind of some real, you know, people having some real relationship distance for living in such close quarters in such a small area by the sea. And even if you can cross over uh, the sea uh, by boat. So what's interesting is, um, I mean, people are pretty like, there's just a lot of negativity um, that's kind of erupting around. Not more than you would see, unfortunately, in day-to-day -day life of human uh, existence, but... We have Antonio Mayans playing a, a, a kind of a town sheriff cop almost. I mean, he's wearing this 
this hat that almost it kept reminding me of a cowboy hat and i you know i kept thinking to myself no this isn't a western this isn't a spaghetti western this is this is you know a just franco film and it's not a western and it's not a real cowboy hat but it but it was giving me those vibes it was just giving me those vibes there was like something with it and it, it was really interesting it was really unique um so as it went on things start to unravel more and you have a world of prostitution but it's not your typical prostitution and the 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 way a lantern at night can be mysterious could that same lantern like that spanish acoustic guitar beautiful beach song could a lantern in the daytime signal something mysterious as well yeah here it does how could a whorehouse be mysterious but where's lena romay i know she's in here oh there's something about her vibe that is intriguing me but yet it's repelling me a bit what's going on here the movie doesn't dumb down to you at all folks you have to go along you have to let the the relationships unravel you have to let the story unravel and like i said don't bat an eye you got to keep up with it there's things happening here when it seems like it is merely dramatic and filled with some relationship poison and history and power struggle the character of Jess Franco shows up the director shows up in character form in maybe one of the most mysterious of his characters in the same way that that man in the original Friday the 13th is mysterious who's riding that bicycle you're all doomed I think he said Jess Franco comes in and makes the movie spookier than you realized is he redefining the world of Baja Blanca is he redefining it in a supernatural sense in a creepy sense is this world of rolling waters and boats and seagulls and sand is this world darker more horrific Lena Romay's character reminds me of a character she played in How to Seduce a Virgin, a mentally handicapped character in in the movie calling her retarded. As a matter of fact, the movie's dialogue is the most explicit thing in the movie. This is a film that has some nudity, but mostly topless nudity. It's not the typical nude world that you'd be familiar with in a Jess Franco film. But what's so interesting is that the dialogue is more explicit than you're prepared for. Some people say that there are Kill Bill from Tarantino, Kill Bill uh, connections to this film. I didn't understand what the hell they were talking about until I kind of started to get closer and closer to the end of the film and I understood a few things here and there. The drama is complex, the dialogue is complex, and things get dark. Things get disturbing. This is not gory, but it sure is hell violent. And it has some violent gunplay in the movie. And much like the boat ride in Countess Perverse, that magical boat ride. I think that was my first video on the Ten Room Bizarro page, so you can find that on here. I think it was the first one ever. The magical boat ride in Countess Perverse. Wow. The boat rides in Baja Blanca take on a whole nother world. They're like harbingers of power and doom. The boats, or the boat, that crosses the water is almost 
the character of Jess Franco's words in flesh. And by the end of the movie, <laughs> it'll send chills down your spine watching that repetitious boat ride to this one part of the island. Things get pretty psychological in here as well. When can protection actually have selfishness in it? Oftentimes, people can look like they're doing good. But we're so twisted that we can actually be serving ourselves when we are seemingly holy. An example of this would be someone who was bullied. Someone who's been bullied and as a result they have horrible self-worth. And so they... Around this time, they become a Christian and they attend church. And their horrible self-worth is now looked at as humility. It's now looked at as a holy attribute, a fruit of the Spirit. And they now get commended for their lack of self-worth. Because it's being cloaked by something holy. But the issue's still there. Festering and getting worse. Never being addressed. Because it's hidden. And things that are hidden are the most dangerous things. Functional alcoholics are the most deadly alcoholics. Psychological things get unraveled in this movie. That are quite deep. Just as complex as you thought this movie was at the beginning is as complex as the emotional depth of the relationships and the characters in this film. Baja Blanca has elements of dark drama, horror, exploitation, And frankly, Franco, fans, I really don't know how to explain the genre of this film. The nudity is mostly topless. And while I've seen Lena Romay's boobs many times, they were incredibly pleasing in here. They just looked more robust, or <laughs> robust, just more juicy or something. They looked great. They looked natural. Amazing. And she had some more weight on her in this film as well, too. And um, I loved... My favorite uh, um, girl in the movie was actually this lead girl here. Um, I think they get the youngest in the movie, maybe. Um, but I just thought she was so hot, um, this, this lead girl. What a, what a face. Her hair, her body. Just something and there's an element of innocence in this film too an element of <laughs> there are gender issues in here the differences between men and women and what are allowed and there's very ahead of its time there's um an element of whew, sex with a mentally handicapped person. Do you know that there are therapists out there, and this is legal, who work as sex therapists for mentally handicapped people and have sex with them since to connect with the people and to heal them sexually. Wow. There's some stuff in here. 
And there are a couple revelations in here as well. There is rape in here. Um, and the character that it comes from is... There's a lot of weight to it. There's almost gangs in here. Are there gangs in here? Um, this is quite a dense film. 1984's Baja Blanca by Jess Franco. I would argue this is not expected in this particular sense, especially from early 80s Jess Franco or from 80s Jess Franco at all. Love Jess Franco's look in here as well, by the way. Um... And there's a, a level of restraint sexually in this film. But as I mentioned, not in the dialogue. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Have a great night.